Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Bonjour, hello. Welcome to the 35th annual Minnesota Book Awards Ceremony. Presented by Education Minnesota. The Minnesota Book Awards is a program of the Friends of the St. Paul Public Library. As the Library of Congress designated Minnesota Center for the Book. Tonight's celebration brings together readers and writers all over the state, both virtually and in person. Thank you to all the organizations and individuals who make this event possible. Thank you, Education Minnesota. Thank you. SPNN. Thank you, Ordway. Thank you, friends. There were 214. 214. 214. 214 submissions for this year's program. Tonight you'll see awards presented live in nine book categories, plus recognition for the winner of the K. Sexton Award. I'm from Rosemount, Minnesota. I'm from Maple Grove. I am originally from San Jose, Costa Rica. Rochester. St. Paul. Cloquet. Minneapolis. Bakley. I'm from Duluth. Kichipa too big in Donjiba. I'm thrilled to be here as a finalist. This is my first. My first. First. Second. Third. Fourth. Fifth. Fifth. Seventh. Ninth. Minnesota Book Awards Ceremony. I'm excited to be in community with you. To share our stories. And to share the stories of our neighbors. Thank you, fellow writers. Thank you, fellow readers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Miigwech. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Minnesota. Thank you, Minnesota. Thank you, Minnesota. And thank you to this year's finalists for that rousing welcome to the 35th annual Minnesota Book Awards. Welcome, everyone. I'm Elaine Hopkins, the Senior Director of Programs and Services for the Friends of the St. Paul Public Library. We are here tonight to honor and celebrate Minnesota's writers. We're so grateful to have you all here in person. And to those watching our live stream, thank you so much for celebrating with us from across the state. Through the Minnesota Book Awards and other programs of the Minnesota Center for the Book, the Friends strives to produce dynamic programming for all ages that celebrates our state's literary heritage, promotes reading and libraries, and connects readers and writers across the state. We acknowledge and value the traditions of storytelling embedded in our state's land by Minnesota's original stewards of story, the Dakota, Ojibwe, and many other tribal nations who call this place home. We at the Friends honor that knowledge of place, community, and culture rooted in these living stories as we work to lift up the voices in storytellers across our state. Tonight, with the help of guests from around the state, we'll present awards to authors in nine categories and to the recipient of the K. Sexton Award. Make sure to follow and tag us on social media. We want to hear your comments on the books, the authors, and the evening. We're really glad that you're here. We'd like to recognize the support provided by our presenting sponsor, Education Minnesota, the state's educators union, representing more than 89,000 professionals working together for excellence in education for all students. Here to speak to Education Minnesota's commitment to learning and literature is Secretary Rodney Rowe. Good evening. Education Minnesota is, a prou is proud to sponsor the Minnesota Book Awards again this year because there have been fewer times when our students needed good books more than now. In my long career in education, I cannot remember a time when censorship of what teachers can say and what students can read has been so blatant or effective. Across the nation in Minnesota schools, the calls are growing louder to remove any book that challenges antiquated ideas of what is OK for students to know. The free speech group, PEN America, 
reported last month that more books were banned from school libraries just this fall than the entire 21-22 school year. The group counted 1,477 banned books, which doesn't include the state laws that forced entire school libraries to close while waiting for state certified inspectors to catalog and clear titles from the libraries. This movement to deny our students the freedom to read has been most thoroughly reported in Texas, Utah, South Carolina, Iowa, and Florida. But I can tell you, it's here in Minnesota too. Teachers are being harassed, school librarians threatened, formal challenges to remove books from libraries are piling up on principal's desk. I respect what Governor Tim Walls was saying when he called a news conference about book bans in March. He held up some classics and he promised it wouldn't happen here. But in the books he raised up, he may have missed the point. This chilling movement isn't about books by William Golding. It's about Abraham Kendi. It's not about the grapes of wrath. It's about gender queer. It's a, not about Kurt Vonnegut. It's about Minnesota's own Duchess Harris. The targets are the stories of the people of color, the LGBTQ+, and the real history of America, from the why of Juneteenth and the who of Ruby Bridges. This cynical political campaign is working and it could cut off our students' voices of the writers and the creators that they so desperately need to hear. Authors and book lovers, we need your help. Whether or not you go home with a prize tonight, keep writing fearlessly. Inspire others to write. Put good work into the world. Use your genius to defend the freedom to read and learn. Help us resist the bans, gag orders, and harassment of educators and librarians who have had the audacity to offer books that would question, push, and provoke. As educators, this is one of our most important struggles. We are dedicated to building lifelong learners who will become active and informed members of our society. To do that, we need books that meet students where they are. Imagine the lonely children who find themselves in a strange, cold state and then discover a poem of dancing and light that promises they are loved and to someone they are life itself. Or the almost universal conflict of adolescence, the pull of home and parents. No matter how flawed or the promise of a future, you can run to like a track star. Or even picture the teenager in a farm country who thinks his growing feelings for a classmate are more complicated than the new kind of calculus. Until his teacher gives him just the right book about love, grief, and cows. <laughs> These are the stories we need today. Stories that help Minnesota students understand themselves, Stories that build connections across divides of race, place, and religion. Stories that show how alike we all really are. We all hope our students carry those lessons that they have learned from those stories for the rest of their lives. Especially now when empathy and understanding feel as rare as a warm day in May. I have only a short time to speak with you this evening, so I hope that you will understand that my focus is on the books for the younger readers, 
but our union also supports nonfiction, fiction, and poetry. Educators are readers too, after all. So from all of us at Education Minnesota, and for all of the students across the state, thank you, authors. Keep up the good work and stay in the fight. And thank you, Minnesota Book Awards, for all you do for readers everywhere. Thank you, and let's have a great evening. Thank you so much, Rodney. We are so appreciative of the work you do with Education Minnesota and for this partnership. We're also grateful to all of our sponsors and partners who make this program possible. Now, it is my pleasure to announce our MC, a familiar face and voice to many, Geraldine Steele. For more than 20 years, Geraldine has graced the airways as a radio talk show host on WCCO 830 AM on Sunday nights. She's a member of the internationally acclaimed family, the Steeles, who've performed from Carnegie Hall to Brazil to the Super Bowl. For more than 10 years, she's been an entertainment reporter for Twin Cities Public Television's award-winning political show, Almanac, interviewing local, national, and international acts. Please join me in welcoming Geraldine Steele. Thank you so much, Elaine. I am so pleased to be in the company of all of you, writers, book lovers. Thank you to all who have channeled their own time, energy, and talents into creating, producing, and sharing the work we honor tonight. Thank you as well to all the sponsors and individuals who make this celebration possible. Before we begin the awards, we'll take a moment to recognize individuals who have helped shape our literary community, but sadly are no longer with us. We have lost some bright lights and creators from Minnesota this past year. Please join me as we remember them tonight. Raghavan Iyer, award-winning cookbook writer and chef, and Joan Lexo, acclaimed children's book writer. We're so grateful for the contributions of these remarkable individuals. They will be dearly missed. As we get into our evening, we're pleased to welcome back the musical trio, the Willie August Project. Man, you guys sound amazing. With original music customized for each winning title by band leader Ben Seams. Our bookseller partner, Red, Balloons, Red Balloon, is featuring the work of tonight's finalists. So be sure to visit their table in the lobby or their book awards webpage and stock up on the finalist books. I will. For our first award, award of the evening, we have novel and short story sponsored by Jeff Yanish with presenter Diane Wilson, winner of last year's award in this category for The Seed Keeper. Come closer, darling, come closer. <laughs> Diane is also a previous book award winner in the memoir and creative nonfiction category for Spirit Car, Journey to the Dakota Past. Diane? Mm, thank you. Haunatakiapi, Diane Wilson, Namakiapia, Shitangu, Oyate, Edomawapia. Hello, all my relatives. My name's Diane Wilson. I am enrolled on the Rosebud Reservation. Really glad to be here tonight with all of you. And as I was thinking about the event tonight and this wonderful gathering of readers, publishers, librarians, writers, book lovers, I remembered how as a child, 
My greatest pleasure was to spend an entire day reading and how that is still true for me today. One of the gifts of story is its ability to transport the reader to an imagined reality, to inspire us with poetic, visceral language, to connect with another's lived experience, and to reach a deeper understanding of the complex issues we wrestle with as a society. As Camille T. Dungy has written, what we decide matters in literature is connected to what we decide will matter for our history, for our pedagogy, for our culture. The nominees for this year's award are all talented storytellers grappling with some of humanity's great gifts and teachings from love and grief to music and neurodiversity. The finalists for novel and short story are The Barons by Kurt Johnson and Ellie Johnson, published by Arcade Publishing, Skyhorse Publishing, Sirens and Muses by Antonia Angris, published by Ballantine Books, Penguin Random House, and Till the Wheels Fall Off by Brad Zeller published by Coffee House Press. <laughs> this is exciting. The winner of the 35th Annual Minnesota Book Award for Novel and Short Story is Kurt Johnson and Ellie Johnson, The Barons. didn't expect this. Uh, listen, first I want to really thank my daughter, Ellie. Um, I, I came up with this idea for um, a book, and it was about Ellie, and I gave it to her. She was uh, uh, in Vermont at college, and I had this idea for her, and uh, about two girls uh, canoeing in the barren lands of northern Canada. And she said, Dad, I don't have time. Why don't you write it yourself? <laughs> um, so I, I, I did. But the reality is, is, is I rely deeply on Ellie's uh, stories of growing up uh, a gay woman and her stories paddling the Thalon River in the barren lands of, of Canada. So uh, I'd like to thank my daughter. <laughs> I'd, I'd like to. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to thank my dad. He, he <laughs> likes my story. <laughs> uh, and I just, I'd like to thank everyone who made this story a possibility, who believed in us, um, and who wants to read queer literature, and who wants to read a story, and wants to be accepting of different people's stories. Go camping, go paddling. <laughs> Get out on the water, it's Minnesota. Go paddling. Thank you so much, everybody. <laughs> you. Now that was special, wasn't it? <laughs> Father and daughter. Congratulations to the both of you. Really quite remarkable. Next, we have the award for a general nonfiction, sponsored by the Duchess Harris Collection. Here to present the award is the duo who won last year for the Violence Project, How to Stop a Mass Shooting Epidemic, Jillian Peterson and James Dinsley. Good evening. 
We are delighted to be here to present the award for general nonfiction. And we know deeply the amount of time and energy and passion and dedication it takes to write a book like this. And we are just incredibly honored to be in the company of these esteemed incredible writers tonight. I have read each of these books honored here tonight, and I can honestly say that each of them is deserving of this recognition. From fascinating insights into historical events, to deeply personal biographies, to eye-opening revelations about gender and race, each of these books has something unique and valuable to offer its readers. So without further ado, the finalists in the general nonfiction category are Daughters of Arawilo, Stories of Somali Women by Ayan Athan, published by Minnesota Historical Society Press. They Don't Want Her Here, Fighting Sexual and Racial Harassment in the American University by Caroline Chalmers, published by University of Iowa Press. Through the Banks of the Red Cedar, My Father and the Team That Changed the Game by Maya Washington, published by Little A Amazon Publishing, and... Wilhelm's Way, the inspiring story of the Iowa chemist who saved the Manhattan Project by Teresa Wilhelm Waldorf, published by Third Generation Publishing. And the winner is... Wilhelm's Way, the inspiring story of the Iowa chemist who changed the Manhattan Project by Teresa Wilhelm Walda. Okay, got to wipe that tear away. So I'm known as the Wilhelm Weeper, because I weep at everything. And I did prepare something, but only because my husband made me. I was not so, you know, I didn't believe this was going to happen. So I want to start out by saying thank you to the friends of the St. Paul Library, the Duchess Harris Collection, and judges. And it behooves me to acknowledge my cohort of incredibly talented finalists. When I began working on Wilhelm's Way, I wasn't sure I would or even could complete it. Ongoing encouragement from so many people, especially my parents, kept me motivated. My mother passed away last August. When finalists were announced in January, my 94 five-year-old father had been unresponsive for days. I went to his bedside, leaned to his ear, and told him I was a finalist. His eyebrows raised up. I couldn't believe it. He died three days later. I'm certain he celebrated the news with my mother. Thank you to the Rochester's Writers Group for your feedback on early drafts. Thank you to friends and colleagues of Dr. Wilhelm who sat with me for interviews that provided insights into him as a scientist and leader. He was my grandpa. <laughs> uh, thank you to the archivists, librarians, and others who enthusiastically helped locate hard-to-find records. Thank you to my beta readers whose opinion confirmed my book would connect with its audience. Thank you to Beth Wright, <laughs> editor extraordinaire, and you should hire her. <laughs> Your counsel and, and skills ensured a quality product. Immense thanks to my entire extended family, who almost all of them are here today, <laughs> because I retired and I told them if I don't win, this is my retirement party. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all for letting me bend your ear for years and years. Special thanks to Myrna Elliott, Lorna Livingston, and especially Gretchen Wilhelm, the children of Dr. Wilhelm, whose interviews, pictures, and writings provided the familial context for the book. 
For years, this was my passion and my husband's second partner. <laughs> Thank you, Dean, for your unwavering support and encouragement, mindful counsel, patience, ideas, especially those chapter titles, feedback and love. Thank you so much. I can't believe it. Well, congratulations to you. My goodness, I would have cried and uh, snorted a few times even on stage. <laughs> Up next is the Emily Buckwald Award for Minnesota Nonfiction, a category that delves into Minnesota history and its people. Sponsored by Annette and John Whaley, its namesake is someone who has made a profound mark on the literary scene in Minnesota. As the founder of Milkweed Editions, an editor, a poet, a teacher, and award-winning children's author. Tonight, we welcome Hampton Smith to present the award winner for last year's Confluence, A History of Fort Snelling. Thank you. It's a real delight to be here again uh, to present this year's Emily Buckwald Award. I sometimes think that fiction writers have several distinct advantages over those of us who hope to write something that is nonfiction. In most instances, they don't need bibliographies and seldom have to wrestle with footnotes. Still, while making stuff up sounds like fun, laboring to tell a compelling story about real places, persons, or things has its own rewards and challenges. Tonight's finalists for the Buckwald Award have admirably crafted accounts on such diverse topics as the history of Minnesota, of a history of a Minnesota city known internationally for its medical facilities while revealing many of the untold stories beyond the world of medicine. Or how a famous Minnesota writer, educator, and explorer, along with his family and friends, create a welcoming and vibrant community on the edge of the boundary waters through hospitality and food, complete with excellent recipes, I might add. Or how a natural history museum at a Midwestern university grew to have worldwide influence on science education and research while providing the public with visually stunning and thought-provoking exhibits. And finally, a story stranger than fiction the scandals and shady dealings behind the creation of a beloved public park. This year's finalists for the Buckwald Award are A Natural Curiosity, The Story of the Bell Museum by Lansing Shepherd, Don Luce, Barbara Coffin, and Gwen Chagrin. Published by University of Minnesota Press, Rochester, an urban biography by William M. By, what am I saying? Virginia M. Wright Peterson, published by Minnesota Historical Society Press. The Steger Homestead Kitchen, Simple Recipes for an Abundant Life by Will Steger and Rita May Steger with Beth Dooley, published by University of Minnesota Press. And finally, when Minnehaha flowed with whiskey, a spirited history of the falls by Karen E. Cooper, published by the Minnesota Historical Society Press. And the winner of this year's Emily Buckwald Award for Minnesota Nonfiction is Karen Cooper, when Minnehaha flowed with whiskey, a spirited history of the fall. <laughs> in this box. <laughs> um, 
They told me cocktail dress, and I said, sure. <laughs> Um, thank you to the judges, the friends of the St. Paul Library, and everyone involved with the Minnesota Book Awards. I could tell everyone was working very hard. You did a wonderful job. This has been a magnificent experience. It is the honor of my lifetime to accept the 2023 Emily Buckwald Award for Minnesota Nonfiction. I know Anne Regan is out there somewhere. I haven't talked to her, but I've seen her. She was my editor at the Minnesota Historical Society Press. When she bought my book, I had no idea how to write a book because this is my first one. <laughs> and so I learned that skill from Anne at the same time that I wrote the manuscript. And so Anne, you know better than anybody, I couldn't have done it without you. There's a lot of people listed in the acknowledgments in my book, and uh, I thanked the people who supported me along the way and some of the libraries that I used to do my research as I discovered the lost history of Minnehaha Falls. Those lists are always incomplete, and I'd like to add to those acknowledgments now. Thank you also to Jeffrey Lund, Irene Fernando, Marion Green, Angela Conley, Chris Latondress, Kevin Anderson, and especially Debbie Gattel. These are the Hennepin County Commissioners, and they use tax dollars to fund Hennepin County Libraries. Without the amazing wealth of resources put online and made freely available to all of us by their funding, my book could not have existed. I want to thank the Commissioners directly, along with every funder who makes resources available to every library. Funding libraries is invaluable to all of us. <laughs> invaluable to all of us as authors and researchers and, of course, as readers. So thank you. <laughs> you. Well done. My goodness, as I sit on the stage, I keep sliding out of the seat. I don't know what that is. But it's fun, you know? It's fun. Well, congratulations to you again. And in addition to honoring the writers and illustrators for their tremendous work, we also celebrate those who have helped create and strengthen our literary ecosystem. Next is a special award bestowed on an individual or organization for outstanding contributions to Minnesota's literary community. Named for Kay Sexton, a career bookseller and dedicated arts advocate. Here to present the award and a brief tribute video is Frank Randall, a senior buyer for Universal Screen Arts. He has been a publishing professional in multiple roles since moving to Minnesota in 1988. Wow. Thank you, Jeremy. I'm absolutely delighted to join in this tribute to Stu Abraham. Please turn your attention to the screen for a brief look at his exceptional literary life. Stu is formerly a publisher's representative. Among the flood of new books, reps work to make sure that stores and libraries are aware of good books. Reps are new books most visible and engaged promoters, and they work hard to expand the range of what we read. Moreover, Stu's long commitment to small publishers means that new and emerging authors, those who need recognition most, always have an ardent supporter. Stu's years of offering his experience, advice, and support have been crucial in developing not only an artistically vibrant literary community in Minnesota, but a financially successful one as well. It was a great day for the Minnesota literary community when Stu Abraham moved here, for he is truly one of a kind. We are all the richer for his presence and involvement in the life of the book in Minnesota, whether we know it or not. For the past three decades, he has quietly, diligently, selflessly dedicated himself to the world of books and reading. He has supported literary organizations and companies like Coffee House Press, Grey Wolf Press, and Consortium Book Sales and Distribution, 
not to mention countless bookstores and booksellers across the state of Minnesota. He brings a refreshing honesty and humility to his work, but this should not belie how seriously, even tenaciously, he approaches the business of selling books. Stu's magic seems to be effortless. His charm is utterly infectious, and his passion for books and the people who write, publish, and perhaps most importantly sell them is, in my experience, unparalleled. I have yet to meet anyone in the Minnesota book community whose life has not been touched by Stu and his generosity. His impact, however, extends far beyond Minnesota. Everywhere I've traveled, I've met people, booksellers, agents, editors, artists, and people in the publishing trenches who know and love Stu and have stories of his impact on their lives. And I have a hard time believing that anyone has had a bigger impact on Minnesota's book community. And I'm eternally grateful to be able to call Stu Abraham my friend. I've got a couple more lines here for you, Stu. Thank you, Frank. I wrote this, so I'm going to say it. With a novelist, eye for detail, Stu has been keeping watch over our liter literary landscape for over 35 years. With the ears of a jazz master, he leaves space for others, building bridges between us, connecting us to authors and their books, and making an essential difference in the outcome of our collective stories. Stu, I know I speak for the entire room when I say thanks for all you do. We love you. On behalf of the friends in the entire Minnesota book community, it is my honor to present the Kay Sexton Award to Stu Abraham. Thank you, Stu. Stand here with me, would you? Okay. Oh, man. Thank you. I made my first sales trip to Minnesota about 45 years ago. I came upstream from Memphis by way of Chicago in my pickup truck filled with publisher's catalogs and sales samples and with my dog, Pete. <laughs> my first sales call was to Hungry Mind Bookstore. <laughs> where I met David Unowski, who I hope is here somewhere, I haven't seen him and the staff. David said, before we started working, he said, hold on, before we start working, first things first. Take off the tie and bring in the dog. <laughs> That's how it's welcome to the book business in Minnesota, and it set the tone for the future. Moving up here some years later, I was lucky to meet my wife, Jeannie, and start a family with her and Ben and Jonathan, whose support for a traveling salesman is most appreciated. It's such a thrill to be acknowledged by the community that I found here and that I love so much. As an independent sales rep, my job has been to represent a myriad of publishers and to sell books to bookstores, museums, and library suppliers all over the Midwest with my colleagues at Abraham Associates. I've made many friends over the years and a few rivals, too. <laughs> I'm, in the right, I'm in, the place, in the right place where I belong. I'm proud to be among all the previous k and Award winners like Don Leeper, Jim Sitter, Alan Kornblum, Norton Stillman, Fiona McRae, all whom I've worked with over the years. Thank you to Frank Randall and others who made it possible to receive this award and be honored like this. Thank you to the late Kay Sexton and to the Friends of the St. Paul Libraries for this terrific honor. I want to thank my current and past pals at Abraham Associates, who are all here tonight. Ted Secora, Emily Johnson, Sandra Law, Steve Horowitz, Juliet Patterson, and Megan Plumfield, Connie Klotz, and Roy Schoenfeld who are all a central part of, an essential part of our success, and especially John Mezjak for his soulful and wise leadership, without which I wouldn't be here at all. And finally, I'd like to acknowledge a few people who likewise supported and mentored me 
in many ways. Jack Jensen, some of these people aren't here, but I hope they're watching. Jack Jensen, Bobby Ricks, Tom Rosen, Julie Shaper, Jonathan Weiss, Fran Lee Frank, Steve Horowitz again, Phil Olila, Jack Schink, and Herman Graff. Congratulations to all the finalists and winners of tonight's awards. I'm proud to live in a state where access to literature and bookstores and libraries is not only supported, but critically valued, with a few exceptions that were mentioned earlier. <laughs> we, can, we can beat them out, I think. <laughs> Have a good time, and thank you all for the good work and for keeping it all going in Minnesota. Excuse me, excuse me. Oh my, you flew away so fast. We do not want you to miss out on that very special box. And if you need someone to handle it, let me know. <laughs> Congratulations, Stu, and thank you for all you have done for our community of writers and readers. For our next award, we have Memoir and Creative Nonfiction, sponsored by Bradshaw Celebration of Life Centers, with presenter Renee Lenore Hansom, Hansen, author of Watershed, Attending to Body and Earth in Distress, a 2022 winner. Well, first, praise to Minnesota, which um, has this celebration. It's a really great, and to the wonderful myriads of writers we've got here. And to those who dare to write memoir, um, this definitely risky, you know? Putting your heart right out there. Everybody sees it in your life and your family and your friends. It's not easy. And then who, to those who do this other thing, which is write something that's nothing, like creative nonfiction, Creative is fiction, right? Nonfiction is not, whatever. But you know, you say, I need to write something and it's nothing. It's not poetry, it's not any of those things, it's something else. And I remember earlier when I lived, when I was young, I don't think there was that category, and now it exists. So thanks to those of you who made the category. And to the wonderful nominees. There are great nominees, and to the four really excellent finalists. All of these you should read. Farewell Transmission, Notes from Hidden Spaces by Will McGrath. Um, I'm not going to try to describe them. There's descriptions there, but I tell you, I read them. They're really worth it. <laughs> Seven Aunts by Stacy Lola Drulard. Sinkhole. A Legacy of Suicide. I forgot to say who these are published by. I'll go back. Sinkhole, A Legacy of Suicide by Juliet Patterson and The Way She Wants to Get There, Telling on Myself by Mary Moore Easter. Farewell Transmissions was published by Dezank Books, Seven Aunts by the University of Minnesota Press, Sinkhole, A Legacy of Suicide by Milkweed Editions, and The Way She Wants to Get There, Telling on Myself by Noden Presh. And I do not know how the judges figured this out, but maybe, I don't know. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not one. The, the award for memoir and creative nonfiction goes to Stacy Lola Trelawney.
discussion going on. <laughs> <clears throat> Renee has been our support person um, for all of the memoirists and creative nonfiction authors. Um, I'm very honored to be a part of that category with Will and Juliet and Mary. What an honor. <clears throat> How do you thank? someone for saving your life, for accepting you as you are, for being an inextricable part of you from beginning to end. My seven aunts are as close to me as the air in my lungs, and yet as far away as the moon. <clears throat> I breathe them in and say their names, Faye, Lila, Doreen, Gloria, Betty, Carol, and Diane. <clears throat> so this is for them, and also for all of the people who miss them dearly, including um, uh, my cousin Cindy, who made the trip, <laughs> um, and uh, especially my mom, Joyce, and my father, Francis, and my sister Dawn. I also uh, recognize the team at the U of M Press, uh, Eric Anderson and everyone who helped put the chapters together, um, everything from um, the cover design to um, making sure that my aunties were out front on center stage. Thank you, uh, Miigwech Apichi, thank you very much. Um, and miigwech, isendawiyeg, thank you for listening, thank you for reading, and um, I promise to keep writing fiercely, as everyone else should here in this room. Miigwech. <laughs>
Now I might identify with this book titled Watercress, and a lot of my students might not, but it gives them a different perspective, like a window into the world, and so it lets them see the world in a way that's different than what they're familiar with. Congratulations to all the finalist authors. Congratulations to all of the finalist authors. Congratulations to all the finalist authors. Congratulations. 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 Congratulations to all the finalists. So I want to thank you so much for recognizing the importance of literacy and to also just say congratulations. Thank you for all that you do. My goodness, without readers, it would be impossible to support the wonderful range of writers we're honoring this evening. You can help support programs like the Minnesota Book Awards that connect readers and writers. The Friends is the center for the book in Minnesota, designated by the Library of Congress, which means the organization is charged with promoting, promoting, Pro promoting books, reading, and libraries as well throughout our state. Your presence tonight is already a show of support for this program, and your additional gift helps the friends reach every corner of our state. If you have not yet made a gift, you can text the amount you want to give to 651-412-3277. I'll say that again. 651-412-3277. Or you can scan the QR code in your program to link straight to our donate page. The number is on your screen at home here and on stage and in the program. Thank you all so much for your support. Now we'll move to the children's literature category, sponsored by Bernadette Janish. Here to present is the award-winning pair who created How to Apologize and Move, among other books, David LaRochelle and Mike Wanuka. Right, good evening. Uh, w. H. Auden said, there are good books which are only for adults. However, there are no good books which are only for children. This is very much the case with the four books created by the talented finalists in this year's Minnesota Book Award category for children's literature. These books can be read and enjoyed over and over again by readers of all ages. These outstanding books include a fable about facing your fears and appreciating the beauty and worth of all the things that make up of our world. A lyrical celebration of the arrival of snow and its fickle departure. <laughs> A collaboration by four authors poetically exploring the diverse hist their diverse histories as well as the ways in which all of us are connected. And an, and an uplifting poem derived from anger and pain that envelops children with hope and love. This year's finalists in children liter children's literature are The Dark Was Done by Lauren Stringer published by Beach Lane Books, Simon & Schuster. So Much Snow by Kristen Schroeder, illustrated by Sarah Jacoby, published by Random House Studio, Penguin Random House. Where We Come From by Diane Wilson, Sun Young Shin, Shannon Gibney, and John Coy, illustrated by Dion MBD, published by Carol Rhoda Books, Learner Publishing. And You Are Life by Bao Fi, illustrated by Hannah Lee, published by Capstone Editions. Ready? All right. Okay. And the winner is 
Kristen Schroeder. So much snow. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, this is quite a surprise. Um, thank you to the friends and everyone who sponsors and puts on the Minnesota Book Awards. Um, I'm in awe of the other books in this category, and I want to say congratulations to all the other finalists. Mark Twain said, write what you know, and I guess I took that advice to heart. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea that so much snow would be published during one of our state's snowiest winters. <laughs> And I do not take any responsibility for that. <laughs> Although it has been suggested that I write a sequel called No More Snow, just in case. So stay tuned. <laughs> um, getting back to the thank yous, I, I want to thank my agents, Krista Heschke and Daniel Hunter, for believing in so much snow when it was an unpolished manuscript. I also want to thank Annie Kelly at Random House Studios for having the vision to bring fantastically talented illustrator Sarah J Jacoby on board. Annie told me that Sarah draws the most adorable animals, and I have to agree. Her illustrations turned my words into a beautiful book, and I'm so grateful. I also want to thank my family for being here with me tonight. Um, thanks to my mom and dad. Uh, <laughs> I can't go into the ugly cry, okay. For instilling a love of reading and writing in me. Also, um, fun fact, my dad was born during an historic blizzard, the Armistice Day blizzard, <laughs> um, and I dedicated this book to him. And thank you to my sister, Bethany, for being here, my husband, Rob, who's a transplant from Australia, so you can ask him how he loves living here. He does, he does. Um, and my children, Skylar and Luca, I love you all. Thanks so much. <laughs> If you play that snow song one more time. <laughs> they're smiling and laughing, they have no idea. <laughs> Congratulations to you. Let's continue focusing now on writing for young people with our next award, Middle Grad Literature, sponsored by Education Minnesota, with presenter Jacqueline West, last year's winner for Long Lost. Oh, hi, everybody. I am delighted to be here with all of you. Um, I'm sure many of you remember, like I do, not too long ago, middle grade and young adult books were part of the same award category. Um, and they had to separate everything eventually because of all the fist fights. I mean, you know, children's authors. Uh, <laughs> but more so because of the absolutely incredible body of work being created by Minnesotan authors for young readers these days. Um, and our four finalists tonight are a beautiful example of that. And writing for these readers feels more important than ever. So huge thanks to the friends, huge thanks to Education Minnesota, and to all of you for supporting literature for every taste, every age, and every kind of reader. Thank you. So the middle grade literature finalists are The Counterclockwise Heart by Brian Ferry, published by Algonquin Books for Young Readers, an imprint of Workman Publishing. Meet Me Halfway by Annika Fajardo, published by Simon & Schuster Books for Young Readers. Monsters in the Mist by Juliana Brandt, published by Source Books for Young Readers. And Windswept by Margie Preuss, published by Amulet Books, an imprint of Abrams Books. And the winner is... Thank you. <laughs> the book award for middle grade literature goes to Brian Ferry for the counterclockwise heart. <laughs> Okay, 
uh, uh, first of all, Margie, Juliana, Annika, I love the three of you. Your books are amazing. We have this unbelievable community, not just of writers in Minnesota, but especially our young writer, for writers for young readers. We are really blessed and have a lot of fantastic writers who support one another. And that's, that's been so important, especially with everything that's been going on in terms of censorship and wanting to take books out of libraries, which is bad, don't do it. Um, so I, I, I just want to say thank you to that community. Thank you to the friends of the St. Paul Library. Am I really up here? I am. Oh, I'm in a monitor. Okay. Um, great. That's going to distract me now. Um, friends of the St. Paul Library, thank you so much. Education Minnesota, you're amazing. My husband is a teacher. He loves you. I love you. Um, thank you for supporting this category and for everything you do. Um, and of course, I have to thank my husband, Benjamin, who is with me tonight. I love you. Um, this book was dedicated uh, to a friend of mine who passed away several years ago. Um, she, uh, my book has a lot to do with motherhood, and she was one of the best mothers I knew. Um, so I would like uh, tonight, a little something different, I would like to dedicate the award to another friend who passed away recently, and on her behalf, I would like to tell you to go out and be amazing. Thank you. <laughs> Oh my, sometimes words are just not enough. Congratulations to round out the trio of categories for young people we have Young Adult Literature, sponsored by Expedition Credit Union and presented by Kalina Miller, winner for the night no one had sex. My goodness. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Um, it is so exciting to be back here and to be presenting the best award of the night. Not that I have any personal biases and not to undercut, you know, all the community stuff. Um, <laughs> we're a little snarkier in YA, it's okay. Um, but in all seriousness, writing books for teens and for young people is, um, it's an amazing un undertaking, it's an exciting undertaking. Um, but as Rodney was talking at, God, I hope his name's Rodney. That's going to be really, the minute, is his name Rodney? Sure. Yeah, Rodney. <laughs> uh, as the Education Minnesota dude, who I think's name is Rodney, was telling us earlier, um, writing books for teenagers these days in uh, 2023 is also a very daunting undertaking. And so, for all of these finalists um, and all of the nominees, I want to congratulate them on doing something that's kind of hard occasionally. Um, but these four books are great, and I am so excited to share them with you tonight. Um, this year's finalists for Young Adult Literature are Born in a Red Canoe by Katherine Johnson, published by Silver Fox Books, The Complicated Calculus and Cows of Carl Paulson by Gary Eldon Peter, published by Fitzroy Books, Regal House Publishing, Maxwell and the Legends of Anini Makwa by Simon Hargraves, published by R Publishing, and Mendel by Damone Bester, published by The Story Plant. And the award for young adult literature goes to Gary Eldon Peter, The Complicated Calculus and Cows of Carl Paulson. Wow. Um. I, did, I wasn't <laughs> expecting this, although I was sort of rehearsing my speech as I was sitting there, I guess. Um, so I'm sort of not being totally truthful about that. Um, <laughs> this is really exciting. This, this book was um, a 20-year project from when I first thought about it to its final um, publication. 
Um, I definitely want to say thank you to um, Regal House um, Publishing, um, who said yes to the book after a lot of no's. Um, and also, I had a really incredible editor at my press, um, Janie Royal, um, who was incredibly patient with me throughout the process of um, getting the book out there and the editing process and all that goes into that. Um, and so I so appreciate her and her, um, her staff and all that they did. Um, I also want to thank all the other finalists in my category who wrote amazing books and um, also the friends of the St. Paul Public Library for putting on such a great event. I want to say a special thank you to um, two friends, good friends of mine who are here tonight, Jim and Larry, out there somewhere. Um, and last, but definitely not least, um, I want to thank my partner, Tom, um, who is here tonight and um, uh, puts up with a lot um, living with a writer, but is uh, an amazing uh, support to me and has been in all these years that I've been um, writing. And um, thank you again uh, for this honor. I'm, I'm, I'm greatly appreciative and um, thank you so much. <laughs> As I pause for a moment, I am taking in all that you've said so far. And for all of the winners so far, it's been remarkable. Thank you for inviting me here tonight. All right. Of course, congratulations to you. And let's hear from a few of our state's young readers next. My name is Anne. My name is Isaac. My name is Quinn. Mark Henry. Cassidy. George. Kayla. Val. Damon Jr. Parker. Alex. My name is Longus. I'm from Minneapolis, Minnesota. My favorite books to read are Percy Jackson. Babysitter's Club. Dogman and Where the Legends Are. Adventure, Mystery, and Fiction. Activity books. Weird but true books. Diary of a Wimpy Kid. Harry Potter and Dark Dyers. Babysitter books. Maya and the Robots. Comic books. Graphic novels and chapter books. I love I love stories because they have action-packed plots, keep me on the edge of my seat, and make me want to keep reading more. I love stories because they're funny. I love stories because they're cool. They are good for the mind. Because I love reading. You can learn and enjoy all kinds of books. Congratulations. 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 Congratulations to all the finalist authors. Congrats to all the finalist authors. Congrats to all the finalist authors. Congratulations to all the finalist authors. hearing those young voices. Do you? <laughs> Beautiful. They may have to save the world, and I think they will be completely ready when it's time. Now, we'll let the suspense build before our final two awards of the evening, and welcome to the stage Beth Burns, the president of the Friends of St. Paul Public Library. Welcome to the stage again, Beth. Surprise, I'm not getting up here to ask you for a donation. <laughs> um, I am really honored, though, to be in front of you this evening, to be with you in community this evening, and to be celebrating writers and readers. Um, I'm super excited to come right after the three categories that tell and bring stories to young people and to the adults who are lucky enough to be around them. And this message is really about the Center for the Book. So you've heard a couple times tonight, the Friends is the Center for the Book for the Library of Congress. I remember when I started at the Friends seven years ago, I was like, what is this Center for the Book thing? And it's really so very cool. In all 50 states, there is a Center for the Book. It is designated by the Library of Congress and charged with what you've heard, reading, writing, literature, promotion of books, promotion of writers. And in 46 states, it's a land-grant university, a humanities commission, a state library. In four states, it's a nonprofit organization. And in one state, it's a friends organization. 
and that is cool. So we are so proud at the Friends of the St. Paul Public Library to be your center for the book. And beyond the charter that you get from the Library of Congress and the unfunded mandates that go along with it, <laughs> um, we have the privilege of using tonight basically as a launch. The Minnesota Book Awards is not a one-night ceremony. It's not um, just a, well, I mean, this is amazing, but it isn't just gonna end tonight. It starts tonight. The finalists and winners who are the family of Minnesota Book Award writers, storytellers, illustrators, we now start a whole year-long series of programs. Moving Words is a statewide tour of Minnesota authors, writers, storytellers to libraries and schools across the state. And who knows what little kid is sitting in Austin or War Road or Owatonna or Red Wing or Duluth, Cloquet, Wyndham, and is going to write the book that in some many years down the road, their peers are going to be saying, congratulations, thank you. This is why we do this. It's a circle, it's a community. You are doing amazing work bringing these stories to life. Who knows who's out there receiving these stories right now, but it is our honor at the Friends to be your state's center for the book, and so I'm just up here to say thank you for that. Quite remarkable. Thank you, Beth. What a fantastic program indeed. Now we have the poetry category, sponsored by Wellington Management and presented by Douglas Kearney, last year's winner for show. Yeah, last year, uh, Su Huang started this off cussing. And like, that's why you save poetry to almost last. So, uh, right, right. All right, so among the many things poetry can do is charge language. And I mean to mean this in the sense of energizing it and holding it to purpose. The four finalists for the Minnesota Book Award in Poetry have each set their craft, care, and wildness to this call. Sometimes, through dynamic insistence, that poetry is not limited to two senses. Like, what's that, right? How poems can clutch and hold fast what fire, death, and estrangement try to snatch away. Or that poems can climb down into the earth and climb back with histories buried there. And through reminding us that words are the swift vehicles of myth and spells. These poets have worked the word to stunning ends. This year's poetry finalists are How to Communicate by John Lee Clark, published by W.W. W. Norton and Company. Real Work by Yana Knittel, published by Norton Press. Surface Displacements by Sheila Packa, published by Wildwood River Press. And The Wet Hex by Sun Young Sheen, published by Coffee House Press. Mm, and the winner is John Lee Clark, How to Communicate. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I'd like to go ahead and share some remarks, but I'm going to go down from the stage and share them with my father so that it can be tactile communication. I wanted to go ahead and use tactile communication without an interpreter between us so that you, Father, could get this message directly. I've been thinking about what I was going to say. And I'm mostly interested, I'm not so much interested in sort of um, the surface appearance of things and being a winner. It's more what I'm interested in is pulling things from underneath the surface. I actually live not very far from here. My family lives very nearby. And maybe many of you are not aware that Minnesota has a very important history related to the deafblind community. But it's not super well known, it's kind of more underground. So hopefully this can help make some of that more clear, pull it to the surface. That community is here, it's working underground, it's very, very active. But it's very rare for it to bubble to the surface and really have an impact and really have a legacy here even though it's incredibly active and, and it is fermenting and growing under there. So I'm hoping that this can help support that, more recognition and awareness, and encourage that growth and development. I'd like to thank my spouse, Adrian, my three children, my brother and sister, and also the many people in the pro-tactile community who have encouraged me and been so much a part of my growth and my poetry and everything that we have pulled from the underground of the deafblind community and brought to the surface here in my book. And last, I would like to thank everyone who has worked in the poetry community. I want you to continue writing. I want to continue the swirl of our activity and writing, and keep up with it all. Thank you, everyone. Isn't it a remarkable night tonight? Well, that brings us to the final award for the evening, Genre Fiction, sponsored by McAllister College. Presenting the award is Wendy Webb, previous winner for the Tale of Halcyon Crane and the End of Temperance Dare. Hi there. Um, wow, that was really moving. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and lower the bar. <laughs> <laughs> Last award of the night, genre fiction. Um, so here's a fun fact. I used to work here. When I was in college, I worked in the ticket office here. And <laughs> it's kind of surreal to be back because I just remember being a young woman, and one of the greatest perks of the job was that I could kind of slide into the auditorium, stand in the back, and watch whatever program I wanted to see. Back in those days, I was dreaming of becoming a writer, and I didn't have the first idea of how I was going to make that happen, how I was going to pull it off. And little did I know, just a few years later, 
I won't tell you how many. Um, I would be standing up here on the Ordway stage, a really proud member of the Minnesota Book Award family, presenting the award to one of these fantastic, gripping, mysterious, even scary books. So with that, the genre finalists are The Quarry Girls by Jess Lowry, published by Thomas and Mercer, Amazon Publishing, Sinister Graves by Marcy Rendon, published by Soho Press, The Temps by Andrew DeYoung, published by Key Light Books, Turner Publishing Company, and The Ursulina by Brian Freeman, published by Blackstone Publishing. And the winner is the cat whisperer herself, Jess Lowry, for the Quarry Girls. Foster Kittens for the Humane Society, so that was what that was about. <laughs> I think it, it's uniquely Minnesotan to be embarrassed that I wrote a speech, the hubris <laughs> of being prepared to possibly win. <laughs> the only thing that would have been worse would have been to disappoint people, so I covered all my bases. <laughs> Uh, so I joke that we have so many great writers in Minnesota because we all grew up with long winters and poor TV reception. Uh, but there are three authors who, who prove that. Actually, I can't speak to their TV reception. But Marcy Rendon, Brian Freeman, Andrew DeYoung, I am honored to be nominated alongside of you. I have deep respect for your writing. Thank you to the Friends of the St. Paul Public Library for organizing this wonderful celebration of Minnesota's written word. This is inc an incredible night. For the judges who volunteered their valuable time to make this possible, to McAllister College for sponsoring the genre fiction category, long live genre fiction. <laughs> Nobody else wants that. <laughs> no, thank you, thank you. To librarians for their important work on the front lines, to bookstores and to readers everywhere. Also, big thanks to my publisher, Thomas and Mercer, for signing me when no one else could. I write stories about women and children who've had their voices taken away, and I had a publisher tell me it's in a small town in a flyover state, and nobody's going to read these, so thank you to Thomas and Mercer for, for proving them wrong. Uh, especially Jessica Tribble-Wells and Charlotte Hersher. They are my editors, and they are phenomenal. To my agent, Jill Marshall, who happens to be one of the best agents in the business, but who is also warm and hilarious. And she's talked me off of more ledges than I ca can count. And thank you to the crime fiction community, which is one of the best I know. Finally, thank you to all of you for coming out tonight to support Minnesota books and libraries. Thank you. <laughs> Well, congratulations to all of tonight's winners and the finalists for your remarkable work, and thank you for sharing your stories with us. We offer gratitude to many others this evening. Thank you again to our presenting sponsor, Education Minnesota. And thanks to our local independent bookseller, Red Balloon Bookshop. Books are still available this evening at their table in the lobby. Our virtual audience can visit their online store that, links, that link is at the bottom of your screen. Thank you to the Willie August Project, Ben Seams on guitar, Jeremy Hauer on drums, and Sean Weying, upright bass. And thank you to Duchess Harris, Chair, and all members of the Center for the Book Committee for their guidance and dedication. Thank you, Duchess, for asking me here, inviting me. 
Let us also recognize the staff of the Friends of the St. Paul Public Library and the judges, panelists, and other volunteers as well as our, all our financial supporters. Thanks to videographer Slade Kimmett. Thank you to our ASL interpreters, Christy and Artson from Veritex Captioning. We extend a huge thank you to the team at the Ordway for guiding us through all the logistics for tonight's program. And we couldn't be more grateful to SPEN, SPNN, I call it SPIN for years now, for their longtime partnership and work on tonight's event. Finally, thanks to all of you for being part of the 35th annual Minnesota Book Awards. Now be sure to stop by the book sales table one last time, mingle with your fellow audience members, and please grab a treat on your way out. Good night, everyone, and good reading. Yeah.